In today's video, we're going to take a short look at this Whisper Light uh, amateur radio beacon transmitter that I got from the fine folks over at Soda Beams in the UK. Uh, the Whisper Light is a low power beacon transmitter that uses a protocol called Whisper or WSPR. WSPR stands for Weak Signal Propagation Reporter. The WSPR or Whisper protocol was developed by Joe Taylor, K1JT, the Nobel Prize winning astrophysicist out of Princeton, New Jersey, and uh, utilizes a very slow speed transmission technique that uh, allows uh, receivers to pick out this signal even if it's as much as 28 dB below the noise floor in a 2.5 kHz reception bandwidth. Now because the protocol allows for a reception of signals well below the noise floor, you can use a very low power beacon transmitter like this device and be heard literally around the world. Radio amateurs around the world set up reporting stations or beacon receivers to pick up signals from low power beacon transmitters like this and report their findings online. And you can go online and check any time to actually see where your beacon was heard. It really is quite fascinating to learn that the you know, 200 milliwatt or less signal from this tiny little beacon transmitter uh, can be received uh, literally halfway around the world. Now, in addition to the official Whisper reporting network, uh, purchasing the Whisper Lite also gives you access to a website called D Explorer. That was also put together by Soda Beams. Now, D Explorer pulls data from the official reporting network and displays it to you in a number of very useful ways to help you understand propagation from your station to other parts of the world. You can look at uh, things such as uh, propagation distance as a function of time of day over the course of several hours or days or even weeks. It also allows you to compare performance of say one antenna system to another to give you a better idea of which antennas are going to work to better into certain parts of the world at certain times of the day. So lots of useful information to help you better understand where your signals can be heard either from a beacon like this or when you get on the air with your regular HF rigs. Now this self-contained little beacon transmitter is powered uh, using a USB micro you know, 5 volt power supply uh, and the other, only other connector is to the antenna. So before you use this whisper light to start uh, sending your signal out to the world you need to simply program it with a couple of pieces of information. Your call sign your location and the transmit power that you're going to use. And those are the only three pieces of, of information that are transmitted by the beacon. This very slow speed uh, transmission protocol takes just, just under two minutes to transmit just those three pieces of information. So to start, let's take a look at uh, what the uh, configuration utility looks like to set up the whisper light with your information. Now there's a small app that's available from Soda Beams uh, that allows you to set the Whisper Light settings. I'm showing the Windows app here, but there's also an app available for Android as well. In this case, I'll connect up to my device, and we can see that I've already got my call sign, my grid locator, the band I want to operate on, and the transmit power kind of indicated here. Uh, you can pick the transmit power anywhere from 5 milliwatts to 200 milliwatts. I, I've been running mine at just 100 milliwatts. Uh, you can also uh, use an external amplifier and then indicate that as well. In this case, as I mentioned, you can operate from 20 meters down to 160 meters, as well as the experimental 630 meter band. I've been operating on 20. Once you've set up all of the settings that you want uh, configured in your Whisper Lite, you simply hit Save Whisper Settings. That writes this information then to the Whisper Lite device. You can then disconnect it from your PC or Android tablet and then simply connect power to it and, to, and then connect up your antenna. There is a single button on the front panel that allows you to initiate the transmissions. Now here's some examples of where I've been heard with my transmitter here on the northeast coast of New Jersey. Uh, after just a couple of hours, uh, we can see I've collected some reception reports uh, from the continental U.S. as well as in Europe, including um, Sierra Leone uh, on the west coast of Africa and the Canary Islands. Uh, a little bit later on, uh, checked again, I even was heard in, on Reunion Island, which is off the east coast of Madagascar in the Indian Ocean. 
And then uh, checking again later on, also found a reception report from uh, the coast of Antarctica. There are lots of uh, resources available online for Whisper. It's actually been around for many years. Uh, this is the website for uh, this particular device that I have, the Whisper Lite Classic. Uh, and I'll put links to all of these resources and more in the video description down below. Uh, here's uh, the DX Explorer site that I mentioned. Uh, it allows me to plot things such as uh, this is transmission distance versus day and time. And we can, uh, can see from this plot that the 20 meter band that uh, we're looking at here, 14 megahertz band, uh, is active really during daytime hours. Uh, right here is about uh, 1900, that's about 2 p.m. East Coast time here. And we can kind of see at night the band kind of goes away, during the day it comes back on again. So a uh, pretty interesting view there. You can also get a, a plot of uh, a map uh, that brings up all of the places where my particular station was heard. Uh, and this is uh, over the last week. We can see uh, there's the Canary Islands here, uh, been heard uh, in Spain and other parts of Europe, and even up into Alaska but from KL7L. This is the official WhisperNet reporting network. It's just uh, whispernet.org. And you can put in uh, information here about uh, what station call sign you want to look for, uh, and over what time period, and over what band, and you can kind of see a map of where uh, that particular station was heard and who it was heard by. Now, also on the Soda Beams website for the product, you'll see a couple of really good reviews, uh, more so than I'm doing here. Uh, this Michael G0 POT does a fantastic overview uh, of the Whisper Lite and all the software. And there are some additional reviews that are available uh, down here on the bottom of the page as well. And of course, there's a wiki page for WSPR for Whisper that uh, has got some additional information here, as well as the official WSGT uh, Whisper uh, homepage. Again, I'll put links for all these down below. But of course, being an engineer with access to some pretty cool test equipment, I wanted to take a quick look at the transmission protocol by capturing and recording a transmission from this beacon and taking a look at it. So let's have a look. Now I recorded the 110 second long transmission uh, using a Tektronix real-time spectrum analyzer. And here's a couple of views of that transmission. Uh, this plot down here is showing me the RF amplitude versus time. And we can see I've got the markers positioned at the beginning and at the end of the transmission showing it's about 110 seconds long. Uh, in capturing that, we can take a look at the spectrum of the signal over time. And that's what this plot shows here. Some people call it a waterfall disk plot or a spectrogram. We can actually see that it's a frequency shift keyed modulation. The red spectrum line down here is showing me where the spectrum looked like at the location indicated by the active marker. And if I drag this marker through, we can actually see how that RF transmission changes versus time. The Whisper transmitter is essentially a 4FSK transmitter, meaning that it uh, shifts frequency between one of four states. And that can easily be seen uh, in the spectrogram but even better seen in the frequency versus time plot up here. This plot shows uh, versus time the frequency deviation from center. I've got the center frequency dialed into 10.1402, uh, in this case on the 30 meter band, and we can actually see the frequency deviation versus time. The scale here is plus or minus 5 hertz, so therefore, 10 divisions, each division is just one hertz of frequency deviation. And we can actually see now uh, that we've got a 4 FSK transmission that's going on. This is an encoded transmission with forward error correction, so we can't pull out the data directly to see what's actually being sent. But what's contained within this transmission is my call sign, W2AEW, my grid locator, uh, Fox November 20, and the transmit power that I was indicating that I was transmitting, or 100 milliwatts. But uh, pretty amazing that uh, we can take this uh, 4 FSK transmission and send it around the world at just 100 milliwatts and have it be heard thousands and thousands of miles away.
Well, I hope you enjoyed this short review of the Whisper Light Classic uh, Whisper Beacon Transmitter uh, from Soda Beams. Uh, if you liked the video, uh, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please do so. And definitely check out the Whisper Light if you're an amateur and uh, want to go understand better the propagation characteristics from your location. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to check all the links and resources in the video notes down below, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.